This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. I'm just going to name them all here, Jared. Let's name them all here. Brick's Blend, Coffee and Q, Snoring Heat, Cajun, Smoked Savory, Two Border, S&P Bud, Carry Steak, Discord, Ope, Four Horsemen, The Old Fashioned, and The Mad Hatter. Check out all the great seasonings and more coming at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% your entire order. That's right, 10% off. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This is private conversation time with our YouTubers and our Discorders. And we got we have baby pictures in the Discord. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> that's what that I mean. That's what's hot in the streets. What can I tell you? Baby pictures in the Discord. It's supposed to be private time with our YouTube people, but it's turning into private time with the Discord people because only Discord people can see this right now. I could slide it over into the frame where we're recording, but. I, I don't know if I don't know if Sean wants me to do that. And besides, we're out of time anyway, so let's get the show started. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm all right. I'm all right. It's been a crazy week. Been a crazy week. How are you doing? Not good. It's, I'm, I'm done with all of this. I'm, I'm just straight up done with all of this. Um, I would love to clickbait you guys. I would love to put some sort of crazy title on this that says, you know, we have the answers, definitive answers on what's happening with big 10 football or October 10, definitely, or definitely not happening. One of the two, whichever one. I definitely would would get more would get more clicks. That's that's because that's the news everyone wants. We celebrate the people who are lying to us, uh, and by by giving us hope. When and I'm not saying there's no hope. That's not what I'm saying. But the people who are force feeding us good news, even when the news is just some dude making it up, um, they become heroes as the people who are giving us bad news become villains. And so I, I know that if I, I, if I named this episode something like October 10, definitely happening, and then lied to you or fed you some false certainty that that would, in the short term at least, uh, be very beneficial for this podcast. But uh, we're not going to do that. Um, if you came here seeking answers... Listen for a few more minutes, then leave. I need to make sure the download counts. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make sure the download counts. But if, if you came here seeking definitive answers, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I, there was a point in time last week in which I was very optimistic. And that time is, is not here anymore. Um, and it's not me saying that I feel bad about October 10. Uh, Which I do right at this second. Right at this second, I feel bad about October 10. But I'm like, I I might feel different by this evening. (laughs) I might feel different by the time this this podcast drops. Um, I I can't, in good conscience, feed you false hope. That's how I'm doing, Kyle. (laughs) I think that we started on that. (laughs) <laughs> let me let me let's let's do some good news here let's do some good news 2020 2022 uh, yeah. that's that's actually a lot harder to say 2022 2022 I'm, it's not that hard kyle okay maybe it's just me uh, 
Ohio State gets a commit from a tight end out of Georgia, Bennett Christian. Yeah, uh, this is a big body blocking tight end. Um, that's not to say that he isn't a pass catcher, because he is. He has a lot of potential in the passing game, but definitely a big bodied blocker. He's quote unquote only a three star for YouTube people, quote unquote only a three star. But uh, don't don't get caught up on that right now. All the evaluation. Oh. I thought I had those system sounds turned off. What the hell? Um, I got all of the uh, all the evaluation stuff is so screwed up and behind because there wasn't a camp series. Uh, don't don't let the the low rating bother you. If Ohio State is taking an out of state three star tight end. Now, and we're not, again, just, just so we're clear, we're not talking about the current 2021 class. We're talking about the 2022 class. This kid is a sophomore or a rising junior. Actually, I think we can officially start calling. I think they've started school down in, in Georgia. So he's a junior. But yeah, don't, don't let the three-star thing throw you. Very talented player. Um, maybe not, not someone who's going to light the world on fire as a receiver, but someone who's absolutely going to contribute along the offensive line as a more traditional tight end. But also, like I said, don't, don't take that as me saying that he's just a lineman playing at tight end because he is also a pass catcher, but that's where his strength lies. I mean, the kid just starting off his junior year, six, six, two thirty five. Yeah. That's a big junior. <laughs> that's a big guy right there. That's that's someone you would want on your basketball team right now. <laughs> uh you know, don't don't give him any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> uh you want you want you want another good news, Jared? Sure. Dwayne Haskins, name the starter in Washington. There you go. For the Washington football team, which is their official yes. name at the moment. I got some more good news for you. Ohio State now leads in both the 2021 and 2022 recruiting classes. Mm -hmm. You want one more nugget, Jared? Sure. KJ Hill made the final 53 roster for the Chargers. I saw a number, um, and I know that like not all roster movements are over, so this this could change, and I don't remember even who to credit that tweet mm -hmm. too or if it's even like i said still accurate yeah it's this is I a think very tough, this is a very tough year for rookies when there was like no barely any camps barely anything that they could do to really no preseason yeah no preseason yeah so you have people like austin mack and um benjamin victor who were cut from the giants can't really blame they didn't really get the opportunity to kind of showcase themselves but well, what and is. what makes that tougher even then is a lot of the times players like that get a chance to go out on national television on a meaningless preseason game, but show off to other teams. Yeah. So that that's the real opportunity loss. Um, but I think the number is 50 after the, the, the tie downs to the 53 man roster uh, the cut downs. I don't know why I said tie downs. The cut downs to the 53 man roster. I think I saw there were 50 Buckeyes across the NFL that made the final 53. Again, roster Almost movements. The entire are, team. Yeah. The roster Almost. movements aren't over yet and so on and so forth. So that number could change. But that, mm -hmm. that's the number I saw. Uh, I'm not going to swear to the accuracy, but it's, it's in that general area. How about that? Gotcha. Yep. So you mentioned, Jared, that Ohio State now owns both 2022 and the 2021 ranking. Yeah. So I guess I guess in over at 24-7 Sports, the composite rankings, I guess there was some shuffling that went around because it seemed like for about the last few weeks, Ohio State and Alabama were going back and forth of that one and two spots since Alabama's big surge with recruits over the past couple of months here. Um I haven't seen any decommits or anything like that from Alabama, so I'm guessing that they they over at 24-7 uh, 
uh, had to change some the composite. Breaking. The composite was updated. Um, I forget who updated their rankings that caused the composite to update, but yeah, the composite was updated. Mm -hmm. Not by much, though. Ohio State only up by 0. 0.59, which points. is nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. And everyone listening, this is still without, at the moment, without JTT and Emeka, who are still heavily favored to to choose Ohio State. For sure. At the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not looking, uh, they, they lose out. I forgot to put this in the show notes. Um, we, we've talked a lot about Jagger Burton. He is officially committed to Kentucky. Uh, Tristan Lee to LSU. He's always he's been an LSU lean for as long as we've been talking about Tristan Lee. That looks to be becoming more and more solid. Um, the offensive line for for a class that's the currently the number one recruiting class. Uh, it, there's some real holes along the offensive line. Ohio State really stumbled down. Through, through and again we still have several months left in this recruiting class but Ohio State has really stumbled strictly along the offensive line yeah I mean I look at the the player rankings here in Alabama JC Latham was one that Ohio State was looking at and Alabama also included a top five prospect another tackle as well so they have two tackles in the top 10 committed to their class. Yeah. And then right there at number three is LSU. And like I said, they're, they're absolutely the front runners for Tristan Lee right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we lost a, a brawly, but it looks like we gained a, a barbecue man. You missed your ad read barbecue man, the mad Canadian. <laughs> All right, Kyle, that's uh, that's enough recruiting for the moment. Um, we have to address what is or maybe isn't happening or what has happened this week. We don't know what's happening with Ohio State in regards to the action to return. There's a lot of rumor out there. There's a lot of hearsay. <laughs> There's a lot of just my source says this and this source says that and people feeling confident but then not confident but then confident again and some people just giving up and some people declaring victory and you know as we said at the top of the show i i want nothing more to, than to sell you certainty i want nothing more even if it was negative to, to come on here and say, hey guys, give up on October 10 because Thanksgiving's the best we could do. Part, even though I don't want that as the outcome and I'm not saying that is the outcome, part of me would still love to come on here and sell you that as a certainty so that you could at least quit stressing about it because part of me wants to just stop stressing about it. Um, because I'm stressing about it. I'm, I'm, I'm in this like you guys are. Um, I might be a little bit more connected than you, than, than the average fan, but it's really like, it's just a little bit more connected. I, I'm in direct communication with people who are connected. That's how I'm connected. It's, it's a secondhand connection. Um, yeah, we've seen, we've seen over the past week here, oh, there's going to be voting happening this last weekend or another one that, posted over um, Sunday here saying, oh, there's going to be a vote Tuesday. And then the majority of P of universities are for it and this and that. It's it's all over the place. I think I, just like what Jared said, it's there's no um, certainty on what exactly is going to happen. But what we can all agree on is the incompetence and the lack of communication that's coming from the Big Ten office itself. Just nothing, no transparency, nothing is coming from them at all. And it's... And I, I agree with you, Jared, where even if it's bad news, tell us it and lay out the reason, give out the 
information on what made you come to that decision? What we have from the Big Ten right now is Kevin Warren coming out and saying that the season is postponed. Now, I don't know how you in good conscience call it postponed without saying when it's postponed to. Mm -hmm. Because we have no clarity on that. Nothing but rumors. We've all heard about October 10th. Uh, there's a lot of talk about October 17th. There's talk. Of, there's been a lot of talk about Thanksgiving. There's been a lot of talk about January 1st. And there's been talks about February, about March. We have no clarity. None of this has actually come from Kevin Warren. None. None of this has come from any of the presidents, even. We have no certainty. Um, I think the most communication we've had about what the Big Ten is thinking is A, out of the new president at Ohio State, President Johnson. Uh, she said at some point this past week that she feels good about fall football, but that she does clarify that the thank that Thanksgiving is still fall. So, you know, she put that out there. She goes, I feel good about fall football. She didn't say, she didn't promise it. She didn't say great. She didn't say certain. She said she feels good about fall football. But like I said, stress that fall still, you know, that Thanksgiving still encompasses fall. You know, that's, that's as much as we've had out of the Big Ten. That's actually useful about a return to play. That's it. Yep. The president who just actually technically started her job last week. And she's leading... <laughs> the Big Ten in public communication. She was actually on camera speaking to reporters. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle. Have we had anyone, any of the other presidents from the Big Ten get on cameras and talk to report? get on a camera? She did it just with a local, I believe it was the ABC affiliate here in Columbus. So it wasn't a big press conference. It was an exclusive with a local affiliate. And, and that was it. Um, we had Kevin Warren sit down where for five minutes and evaded questions from a network that he owns or, you know, that he is the president of the thing that owns the thing. You know what I mean? And he evades all those questions. President Johnson gave us answers. Were they certain answers? No. But once again, beware people selling you certain answers. They are lying to you. Mm -hmm. Beware merchants of certainty anyone giving you certainty right now is lying to you they are lying to you at least at the time we're recording this lord knows this changes at a rapid pace if you're listening to this on monday which unless you're a member of our our patreon crew you have no choice but to listen to this on monday and the late and the further away we get from monday maybe there is certainty now to sell there's been a lot of talk about a Tuesday vote. But there was also a lot of talk about a Friday vote. And now we're talking about, okay, there's going to be a Friday vote. Well, okay, it actually might be a Saturday vote. Well, we're sitting here on Sunday and there was no vote. So now we're talking about why wasn't there a, a Friday or a Saturday vote. And uh, there's been a lot. It, it was in SI. It was written by a Michigan, I, I suppose I will call him a Michigan insider. I know he, he does a podcast for Michigan. Um, I know, and the thing he published was on sportsillustrated.com. Basically putting the blame of there not being a vote on, at the feet of the president of Michigan who is according to this individual holding things up and potentially holding the big 10 season ransom because Ohio state versus Michigan is the biggest money maker that the conference has to offer. According to some people, I don't know how true any of this is. Again, I'm not selling you any certainty here mm -hmm. that there could have been a vote last Friday or Saturday, but that Warren is holding it off until 
he can get like a unanimous or close to unanimous or get everyone to agree to abide by the vote. He wants all 14 teams playing is the story that's being told. So until he can get that to happen, then he doesn't want to do a vote. And that's why Mm -hmm. the vote didn't happen Friday slash Saturday. I'm not telling you that's true. All I can do is report rumor to you. Why can I only report rumor to you? Because Kevin Warren is radio silent. Yep. What choice do we have but to speculate wildly? Yeah, but who wasn't radio silent here was Michigan fans and families last Saturday. Yeah. Uh, The parents and fans went on a march to bring awareness and about trying to get more transparency on essentially the same thing that Ohio state did last or the weekend before. And then what a few of the big 10 parents did in Chicago, um, a couple of weeks before that too. Uh, in there was Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh was there in the crowd and walking around and what we can't say for certain, cause Hey, he's there talking to people. He's there on a camera talking to people right now. Yeah. One of the things that he said was that, just like Ohio State, they're still practicing. They're still getting ready just at a moment's notice, which is good. I can't say for the same thing for other universities who are doing the same thing or aren't doing the same thing. But he he went out there and said that, hey, if you told me that that football is going to happen, I'll just come back and say, give us two weeks. We're ready to play in two weeks. Yeah, and people are like, well, you know, well, even if they voted on October 10th, that's not enough time to get the play. You think they're not just sitting around. I understand mm-hmm. that Maryland's having more issues with outbreaks right now. And, and Rutgers is having the COVID hit the East Coast because of their increased international traffic and because of increased population dense, density. I understand that the story is and could be different for Rutgers in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And if they decided to opt out of the season, I would get that. And I, so I get that. I'm not, their situation is different. So I, I I don't want to include if I'm going to be critical, I don't want to necessarily want to include those universities. Again, their situation is different than what we're seeing further West. So I just want to clarify that. But what we're seeing out of Michigan and what the rest of the big 10 is saying, they're saying, Hey, we're still practicing over here. We're not allowed to put Mm -hmm. shoulder pads on because NCAA rules, but we're in helmets. We're running plays. We're installing plays. We're conditioning. We can be ready in two weeks. Yeah. There's no guidance, no talk about what players can and can't do from a university stand for, from a conference standpoint, NCAA, yeah, we kind of know those rules, but it doesn't prevent them from practicing still. But because of the radio silence that is coming from Kevin Warren, uh, I'm all I'm all for with Ohio State's and the Michigans of the world right now who's practicing and be like, hey, we really want a season and we're going to make sure that we're ready in case that really does happen or when it does, whatever the case may be. (laughs) I forgot to include that in the, we don't know scenario I was playing earlier. We don't know there's going to be football. I mean, let's, let's be clear. And even if the football does happen, if we're talking post January, anytime outside of this calendar year, what is that even going to look like? Who's even going to play? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, even even Urban Meyer still on the Big Ten Network, he's still just just solid on his answer, even from day one. He doesn't believe that there will be a spring uh, season or that there really should be one to have. Like yeah, he, he's still sticking to his guns about that. Maybe now, maybe you could play devil's advocate and look at it at. Or maybe that just because Urban Meyer is really trying to push a fall season rather than spring. Probably. It's probably 
some of it too. Maybe that's why he's as adamant as he is. Maybe he's trying to get that out there, but he's also right. You can't start up a season in March, play anything even closely resembling a respectable football Mm -hmm. season, and then turn around and play again in September 2021. It's not realistic. And then even what, and and what I really thought really got things going even further beyond what the parents of the football team uh, started saying was that, was that Saban said that, well, in the spring, you're pretty much just going to have a JV team. So what's the point? And and we don't, we, we spent half an episode debating if a season like that even matters last week's episode. I'm of the opinion that that season doesn't even matter. And Kyle disagrees with me. And if you want to hear us argue about that, go listen to last week's episode. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you want to hear what I think we should do to fix all of this from the ground up, go listen to our radical plan to fix college football episode, which I am doubling down on. I'm done with the big 10 dissolve it. I'm done with it. I'm done with the Big Ten. If Ohio State does not play football this October, I am done with the Big Ten. I'm just done with it. I don't care anymore. Ohio State should leave. They should be an independent. They should form a new league with the teams who actually give a shit. Go form a four-team conference with Notre Dame, Ohio State, Iowa, Nebraska for all I care. Or just screw Notre Dame even. I don't, I don't care about them either. Penn State has been active and involved in this. Let's bring Penn State along. Come on, Penn State. But I'm done. I'm just, I'm done with the Big Ten. I'm done defending it. I'm done. I'm done with the Big Ten. I don't care anymore. How long have we cared? When's the last time we did care? I mean... We, we, we've always sort of had one foot in, one foot out uh, as far as like not defending it. But we've always said, well, if the Big Ten wants to get better and then we talk about how the Big Ten needs to get better and we, it, it's always been sort of a love-hate relationship, but it's just a hate-hate relationship after this. Yeah. I've never once said that Ohio, before all of this, never once said Ohio State should leave the Big Ten. That's absurd. It's always been absurd. Well, you're going to essentially bowl ban Ohio State this year for no good reason. And before anyone, before, I know there's some people who are like, well, player health, player health, player health. I want the players, I don't want anyone under any undue risk. Understand that Kyle and I both believe that COVID is a very real issue and that it needs to be watched and taken care of. But that that's this isn't us like denying covid that's not that's not what we're saying that's not what we're doing we are as a matter of fact paying very close attention because there's a story that a bunch of the national media folk absolutely ran with this week that 30 to 35 percent of big 10 players had swollen hearts that's yeah i'm not even going to try and pronounce the actual medical term It's a big fancy medical word for like your heart muscle swelling. And that has been debunked weeks ago. That is there a risk of that happening? Yes. Is that risk any more? And again, I'm just specifically talking about this one thing with the heart swell. Is that risk anything more than any other virus, any typical flu? And it's not. It happens in the same number of patients recovery there's no real reason to think that people who fully recover from it would be any different than with other viruses this this does not seem to be a a giant deal that should prevent anyone from playing in fact the ncaa's dr brian hainline not brian hartline as i first accidentally read it the first time I said first twice there and it bothers me and I just want to acknowledge it. Uh, He says, quote, I work very closely with the SEC, Big 12, ACC, and 
all of the autonomy five conferences. I've never heard the term autonomy five. That's, that's what it, that's what it says in this tweet. I've never heard that phrase before. Final recommendations were exactly aligned with NCAA decisions. So I'm highly confident from a decision-making point of view with regards to football. Nobody is denying any facts. Again, highly respectable individuals are looking at the data. Some of you know, you take a risk if you do this and a risk if you don't do that. The sort of tolerance you have in playing it out, ultimately the virus is going to decide. Point is, is that he is recommend, he's not saying, how do I say this? I wanna say this succinctly because Lord knows Dr. Brian Hanline did not. Essentially saying that there's no reason to believe that athletes are at any more or less risk with COVID than anyone else is what he is saying. There's not an increased risk of heart swelling. There, there's, if, which sort of brings us back to what so many of us are saying. If it's safe enough to bring the students back on campus, then it's safe enough for a hundred of those students to play football. And we've seen it over this last weekend. I know there was a report coming out with the army after their victory. They came back and said, yeah, no positive cases with us. And the case with many, many, many other universities. Same thing playing. with, was it Central Alabama who played last week? We've just not seen it. You can't catch COVID unless someone's there with COVID. Like it doesn't, it doesn't just spring up. So you have to catch it from somebody. And we have rapid testing now. Abbott yes. Labs, and if you're from Columbus, Ohio, you know Abbott Labs. They have a big footprint here in Columbus. They have we have rapid testing now. The Pac-12 is working with a company with rapid testing that isn't Abbott but is someone else. It's the same company that the Pac or excuse me, that the Big 12 is working with. We have rapid testing that can give you cheap, near immediate tests. 15 minutes. You can test your entire football team. I don't want to say you can test your entire football team in 15 minutes, but each individual test takes 15 minutes. You can get your entire football team done in the morning before they play in the afternoon. They're relatively cheap. And in case they are too expensive, uh, the federal government has already come in and said they will assist because the federal government wants to see football happen. Why? Because the populace is pissed and hurting and they, they don't want their populace pissed and hurting any more than they've already been this particular 2020. People yep. are just generally speaking, the populace of this country is a little edgy. <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. We're not getting into anything deeper than that. We're all just a little bit edgy right now. And taking away Big Ten football is not going to help in that situation. I know one way to help it, Jared. Barbecue? Barbecue. Uh -huh. Barbecuing fixes all. Barbecue fixes all. Eh, it fixes a lot, but it doesn't put football on my television. You can continue with the ad read. <laughs> I was, I was going to let you at it. Just, just let you go with it. Let you go. It looks like you got some, I got, got the, some things there, Jared. What I do got, you got there? That one's the carry steak. Hey, camera mm -hmm. finally focused. Um, that's that's good on any sort of beef. Uh, more than just beef, but that's that's the real winner there. Um, I don't have it right here with me, but I want to talk about the old fashioned, which is uh, a one that I, I had a little bit of a recommendation in 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 helping craft because um, I thought, hey, you know, Mad Canadian, what would be kind of cool if you had something that tasted like an old fashioned, like the, like the cocktail. Um, I don't think that's exactly how that went down, but it went down something like that. <laughs> um, I think I actually said something that was bourbony, and I think and I think he said something along the lines of, "Oh yeah, you sound like a friend of mine. He's been asking me for something with a lot of cherry in it," and I was just like, um, "Why not both? <laughs> Make it an old fashioned that has a cherry in it." 
And then a little bit of time later, and you know, the Mad Canadian went to his lab. He did all the hard work. I just sort of tossed an idea out there. He goes back to the Mad Canadian lab, puts in all the hard work, does a bunch of taste testing. He comes back with the old fashioned. It's bourbon and it's cherry. Uh, it's got some bitters in there. It's a little bit more than just bourbon and cherry because he's mad. He's a mad Canadian. He goes into his mad science laboratory and he makes magic happen. And I'm not, I'm not privy to all of that magic. But I do get to <laughs> enjoy the results. Uh, and the results are the old-fashioned. I also had a bit of a hand in the Mad Hatter, but I think uh, maybe we'll talk about the Mad Hatter in the next ad read. Uh, for right now, you can go to the Mad Canadian uh, get the old fashioned, get the Mad Hatter, get the Kerry steak, get whatever you want. Doesn't matter how many spices you get, whether it be one or 50, you'd have to double up on a few to get the 50. But doesn't matter one or 50 or 100 or 1,000. Hey, Mad Canadian, you're still in here. Can can someone buy a thousand spices from you? Can you <laughs> can you handle an order like that? Either way, either way, make sure you use the promo <laughs> Spookcast10 at checkout for 10% off yeah. your entire order of 10, 20, 50, 100, whatever it may be. There you go. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company has got your butt covered. Uh, thank you, Kyle, for reeling me in there. I get lost sometimes, and I'm I'm just I'm in a bad mood. What can I say? It's very rare, Kyle, that I sit down to do this podcast with you, and I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of where I'm at right now. I I, I kind of didn't want to do this podcast today. Yeah, it really I'm sucks. Just... Like it's it's September. Our our fellow Patreons, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners too, is like, hey. I'm ready for the Friday episodes. Yeah. And I, I do miss, I do miss our Friday episodes. We get, get a little bit more creative in there. We add a little bit more music in there. We get into some of our um, different sections in there. Know your enemy and all that. Yeah. I, I really do miss that. I really do. Yeah. And by the way, I had a few people respond back to me. A um, couple in email, a couple of the folks in the Discord. I asked last week's episode, hey, do you want us to just start covering the other college football games? And I got kind of a resounding no. Was like, no, don't don't just be a national football podcast. Yeah, it's it's similar where I saw, I would say it's a, not overwhelming, but there was, there was a good majority of people is like, I'm not even going to watch football. I'm just going to be too depressed. Did you watch any football this weekend? I did, actually. Oh. I, any college football this weekend? I did. Oh, okay. I, 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 couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't watch my football team. They weren't They weren't free to <laughs> to streams. I had to pay, like, check. I could have, but I didn't have the time. He's invested. talking about his high school, by the way, for anyone listening. Yeah. For um, I didn't have the time invested to pay seven dollars to watch a streaming event. Now, if I did, yeah, I would have paid seven dollars to watch them. All that money would have gone to the high school who's hosting it then, as essentially like a ticket to the game, which I thought was kind of cool. But yeah, either way, no, I did watch some college. It was more of, hey, I'm here on my computer doing different things. Here's my iPad streaming the game, and I just had it right there, just kind of just. Not necessarily, but I guess kind of like background noise in a way. I turned the army game on for a second, but all it did was remind me what I'm missing. Yeah. Um, and it made me, and I, and I just couldn't. So I watched Doctor Who instead. That's, that's just where I was at. Um, so Rhett, I have a, I have a couple questions for you, Kyle. Sure. I have one question for you. One, just one. Now. <laughs> I was going to ask another one, but. Um, I think I'll ask that one to the fans, uh, not not directly to you. Um, should we organize a boycott? Here, here's my thought. Here's my thought process. Who can really change the Big Ten? President of the United States is trying, and that seems. It, it, it makes it more politicized than it already is. It might hurt as much as it helps. I'm not getting into the details of that, but you know, there, there might be, could be university presidents who now don't want to help out of spite or whatever. 
not not getting into the politics of it. Who can really change the opinion, change the course of opinion within the Big Ten? Who has forced changes, football-based changes, onto the Big Ten and other conferences through the years? Television. Thursday games, Friday games, evening games. All of a sudden, Ohio State's playing all nooners last year. Why? Because that's what Fox wanted. Because Fox wanted all their marquee games on at noon. That's what they were. That's that's the TV slice they were attempting to, to take up. So how do we encourage Fox and ESPN to put pressure on the Big Ten? We stop watching their content. How, how, how do we, how do we, if we can organize a boycott of all college football and really drive those Fox and ESPN college football ratings down even further than they're already going to be, or at least if we can make them scared that that's what's going to happen, then maybe that encourages Fox and ESPN to start putting more or enough pressure on the big 10 to make football happen. But how long can you go on to do that though? We only like, have how, to, we only have to scare them that it could happen. I don't, I don't think it's going, I don't think they would be scared enough until they start seeing the numbers. Unfortunately, how, how I see it. Well, I mean, in all honesty, do you really want to watch Clemson play Alabama play this year if it has no bearing on what happens to Ohio State? Do you even want that? Are you going to sit around and watch SEC and ACC games this year knowing that Ohio State won't be playing for another couple months? Knowing that Ohio State has zero chance to make it into the playoffs? Do you give a shit? I mean, I want to watch it, but I, I, I also wanted to watch football this weekend and I couldn't force myself to. I don't know how big of a sacrifice it is. I don't know if we actually have to push people, Big Ten people, fans of Ohio State and Michigan and Penn. I don't know that we have to push them that hard to not watch football. It's tough because you got people who are very who just love the game in general. Let's just, let's just say the players. So let's do just say I. The player, let's just say the players themselves where they're like, you're going to have some players they just want to watch because they love the game so much too. But then I could see also kind of like your boat too, where they just can't see it because it's just going to piss them off because they're not there playing. All the blood and sweat that they've done through the summer – going through to do all these extra things to keep everybody safe and nobody talked to them. Nobody talked to the coaches and it was just all decision was made behind closed doors without any explanation. And it just pisses them off. Right. So, but I, everyone's pissed off. I feel like we, this would be a non-starter if people weren't pissed off. I don't know that we have to push Big Ten fans that hard to not watch football. If there's no Big Ten on... And by the way, like... we It has to be a social media movement. Because yeah. if we actually wait long enough to affect their ratings, then it's too late to affect change for the Big Ten anyway. Because the other conferences aren't kicking off until the beginning of October anyway. And, and you can't force Ohio State or rather you can't force the big 10 to change their mind that late in the game. The only way we can force the big 10 to change their mind in a way that actually matters in is basically in this next week. ACC, SEC, Big 12, they're they're going. They're going. Labor Day was the cutoff. If they were going to push their season back even further, Labor Day was the cutoff from a TV standpoint. 
So unless we hear something on Monday that the other conferences are also going to push back, then go ahead and expect the other conferences to stick to their October 1st or whatever that Saturday is. Expect them to stick to that number. They're, they're going. And again, unless we hear something and I, and I, I've, there's zero smoke. I, I'm hearing absolutely nothing to suggest that the power three are, are going to not go on their current trajectory. What choice do we have? I, it's a, it's a last ditch effort, Kyle. It's desperation. We just need enough people to make enough of a stink on Twitter to scare ESPN and college football or ESPN and Fox college football. Mm-hmm. We just got to scare them. And cause that's, that's the only option we have. You guys don't even necessarily need to follow through on it. <laughs> if we're being honest, that being said, I don't know if I can, I, I really don't know if I can watch college football this year. I, I, it's, it's easy to opt out of army when your biggest brand this past weekend was army. It's real easy just to not watch army, especially considering they blew out middle Tennessee, I think is who they were playing. It's easy to skip the conference USA games. It's easy to just, okay, whatever. So the ratings have probably sucked this weekend just because no one of any real note was playing. What we have to do is convince Fox and ESPN that no one's going to watch once the power three start. That's what we have to convince them of. And again, I don't even know if that's a lie. I don't know that I can watch those games knowing that Ohio State is being barred from playing. I don't know that I can. Yeah. I'm, <clears throat> yeah. I'm really curious to see what the ratings really were this weekend and how bad they ended up. I think what would be most telling is how many people actually watched college game day, which I'll be honest, I forgot was even on. I turned it on for like, five minutes, 10 minutes max, and then turned it off. Cause it's the same parade of national media people who are somehow praising or encouraging the big 10 to wait until January while also being really excited to watch the games that are on who are still, you, you can't be like, uh, no, the big 10 needs to wait till January and then turn around and talk about who your Heisman favorite is on the same show. Exactly. exactly. I, I don't know how, I don't know the mental gymnastics that you can be one segment. Uh, yeah. Big 10 pac 12. They shouldn't be playing in, until January or February. Okay. Go to commercial. Come back. Who's your Heisman favorite guys. That I don't know how you, do that other than ESPN telling you you have to or you're fired. Uh, like that's that's the only thing I can hear Desmond Howard say that would he got, I I it's my job I have to. I, is is the only acceptable response to that. Which is why I didn't necessarily lay into those guys as hard as I wanted to because ultimately mm-hmm. it's their job they have to. But like what are you doing? If if you're that concerned about the Big Ten athletes that they should be waiting until January, what are you doing to protect the athletes that you're covering right now? And maybe they are doing stuff behind the scenes. I don't know. Maybe they're full of crap. I don't know. Why they they are full of crap, but for other reasons. We know Desmond Howard's full of crap, but <sighs> We knew that already. Yeah. All right, Jared. Let's let's answer some Ask Sloopcast questions here. I'm still upset. Well, let's answer some of these. See if we can get you out of that mood here. It's not gonna um, happen. Sun card asks us, Jared. Yeah. Are we more towards you? But do you pause the air fryer 
when checking on your food or do you just pull the tray out you st- pick a time i don't care if we're talking about the oven the air fryer the grill i don't i don't care what we're talking about you know an open an open range is a different is a different thing but if it's a thing you close set a timer and stick to it Stop playing with your food. Yes. that That's my answer to you. 100% agree. Don't, don't let the heat out. You're ruining it. You're ruining your cook by checking on it too much. Don't flip your burgers until they're ready to be flipped. Quit playing with your food. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's my Agreed. answer. All right. Duncan from the Discord. How long are opposing teams allowed to steamroll Arkansas State quarterback in obvious knee situations? I didn't watch the game. I don't know. That one I didn't watch, though. Um, well, I think he's talking about, like, in an obvious knee situation. Is he talking about, like, when you're kneeling the ball at the end of the game, but the other team is trying really hard to cause a fumble or something? Is that what he's talking about? That's how I took that. Listen, if if the quarterback immediately takes a knee, then there there shouldn't be more than a split second. If the quarterback's doing that thing where he's acting like he's going to take a knee, but then takes another step back, or he's it's waiting a real, th- then anything that happens to him is his fault. Take the knee or don't. And if you don't, and you try and squeeze a couple extra seconds out, whatever happens to you is your fault. All right, some card with a couple of questions here, Jared. Are you expecting fans of Big Ten teams to continue to watch college football? Oh, hey, we just talked about this. Because we typically watch other games or to not watch at all. I I, I don't know that I can. I might force myself to for the sake of the podcast – um, maybe do something like hashtag boycott CFB. I what what else are we gonna do? I mean, we keep pushing, we keep pushing, and I think Kevin Warren hears us, and I think the Big Ten hears us, but I also think that there are university presidents who are arrogant and think that we're just a bunch of clamoring football fans who only care about wanting to see football, which is not what's happening. Are there some people out there who just want football at all costs and don't give a shit about the player's health? Yeah, those people exist. I'm not going to act like they don't, but that's not what we're doing here. Are there people out there that denies that COVID is even a really actual thing other than there? there's still people out there sticking to like, oh, COVID's nothing but the flu and blah, blah, blah. Or, yeah, those people exist. I'm not saying they don't. But you have to understand that the vast majority of us think that the situation should be at least in somewhat of the control of the players or the players parents or at least that they should be involved in the conversation which is the big sticking point here but the ncaa doctor came out and said it's fine many cardiologists have come out and said this heart swelling issue isn't really an issue so I don't understand why the Big Ten or Kevin Warren is doing what he's doing right now. It just doesn't make sense. I, the stuff I'm hearing now, and I don't know if any of it's true, is that he seems to be attempting to fix it, but that he's trying to get everyone on the same page, which getting everyone on the same page did not seem to be a big cause of concern When he was canceling football, considering the universities, many of them were surprised by it. And we still don't know if an actual vote happens, even though they're saying that one did. Why on earth would the Minnesota president come out and say that there wasn't one? Why on earth was everyone at Ohio State? I'm telling you for a fact. I know this for a fact that the people in the Woody Hayes Center, the athletics department people at Ohio State were floored by the cancellation. They did not know it was happening. Mm-hmm. And I also want to say this for a fact that a, we've 
I, Kyle and I have done it in the past. Um, Kyle and I have done it recently. Gone after Gene Smith for decisions he's made, for things he's done and not done. What I can tell you is, is that he is absolutely doing everything he possibly can right now. You can still not like Gene Smith. I'm not asking you to change, but I'm saying in this situation, he's doing everything he possibly can do. Yeah, so I know, I know none of people. this, this situation yeah. is n not Gene Smith's fault. In fact, he's doing everything he can on the pro football side. So you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people who just won't forgive what he did with Trussell and that whole debacle that went on there. Completely understand. But yeah, agree with Jared here. He is doing everything he can here because he sees how much of an effort Coach Day and the rest of the staff and the players going through to keep everybody safe. He sees it. He sees it. Yeah. Yeah. Everything from trying to make football happen to making sure that the athletes are as safe and protected as they possibly can. Everything related to COVID and the season getting canceled and trying to get the season reinstated. All of it, Gene Smith is doing everything he can. And I know early on I criticized him and I just want to say that that was wrong. Did you see that, Kevin Warren? Did you see how easy it is to admit you made a mistake? That was not, I wasn't trying to do that, but the thought popped into my head. I was wrong. I said a lot of bad stuff about Gene Smith a few weeks ago when the season was canceled. I was wrong. Yep. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. It's okay. Right. We're all wrong. Another question here. Is there a tailgate worthy casserole? I'm going to point this out for you real quick. Um, yes. Because a lot of things are casseroles that we don't necessarily call casseroles. I would point out that if you technically, like if you make a cheese dip, that's a casserole. Technically speaking. Yeah, there's some good pasta casseroles that I Technically, see. mac and cheese is a casserole. It's a pasta bake. Is a pasta bake a casserole? I'm not trying to get into a hot dog sandwich conversation with you, but you could make the argument that a pasta bake is a casserole. You could. Technically. Hot dog, sandwich, pineapple pizza. We're not getting into the details of it, but I could, you could definitely make an argument. Man, people just ripping on pineapple. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I'm pro pumpkin. I am pro pumpkin spice. I am pro Hawaiian pizza, which has pineapple on it. I don't want to just get like a pepperoni and pineapple pizza. That sounds bad. But if we're, yeah. But if we're doing like a full fledged Hawaiian pizza, with ham, pineapple, apple, bacon, onion. Yes. If we're doing a full, if we're, if we're fully committing to Hawaiian pizza, I, I, I'm all about that pineapple. I just, I don't like it when it's just tossed on there with other stuff. I 100% agree. Yes. So whenever I hear people are talking about pineapple and pizza and Listen, they're like, Oh, why is that? I'm like Hawaiian, Hawaiian pizza should be its own little thing there. Just leave Hawaiian pizzas all over there. And as far as the hot dog conversation goes, like if a hot dog's a hoagie. So ask yourself this. Is a meatball hoagie a sandwich? Because it's the same thing. If you believe a meat ho a meatball hoagie is a sandwich, then yes, a, a hot dog is a sandwich. If you if you say that it's not, then fine, it's not. But it's the same thing. The Friday shows typically start around this time of the year. Yep. Yes. We Our we first do. Friday show would have been last Friday. Actually, expect, it would. Uh, that, we don't need to get into details. Can we expect a surprise Friday no. drop this week? Nope. I don't know when he asked this, but um, you definitely shouldn't expect it. <laughs> no. <laughs> for, no. For our non-YouTube viewers, Kyle just winked at the camera. No. Listen, I'll yeah. tell you, I'll tell you this. Uh, let's make a deal. Kyle, I'm going to, you, you can veto this, but I'm going to make a deal with Suncard right now. Okay. If, if Ohio state and the big 10 announce at some point between now and Thursday, and it has to be early on Thursday. If they, if it's like nine o'clock on a Thursday, no, let's, let's put it at one o'clock on Thursday. Let's put the deadline 1 PM Eastern standard time. 
or Eastern date, whatever one we're in right now. I, I don't know. Eastern. Whoa. <laughs> one o'clock Thursday, Eastern time. If before then the big 10 announces that Ohio state and all big 10 football, but I, Ohio state's all I care about. If we know for a fact that Ohio state will be playing football on either October 10th or October 17th, we will give you a Friday episode. We'll be covering the we'll just celebrate. Of- we'll just straight celebrate for a half hour, Kyle. That's all we got to do. We just got to come on here and be like, yes, for, for 30 minutes. That's all we got to do. We just got to all. I, I, if I, if I can be angry for a half hour, I can be happy for a half hour. That's balance. Oh, Friday episodes lined up to do what we normally do. In, our, in the preseason, essentially, it's like, oh, hey, we're going to cover the ACC. We're going to cover the Big Ten. Uh, or, Previews. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm sorry. The Big North. Uh, <laughs> I can't I can't do that right now. That feels too normal. I, but uh, uh, th- that's the deal. Uh, Kyle and Suncard. Suncard asked us that, right? Yeah. Thursday, 1 o'clock Eastern. If we find out that Ohio state with or without the big 10 or in some semblance of the, I don't know is playing football October 10th or 17th. We'll do a Friday episode. All right. I'm I'll, I'll commit to that. All right. Duncan asks one more question. You're at a non adventurous bar. Your choices are something light, something light, something great lakes, and Sam Adams, what are you drinking? I probably Great Lakes. I only drink beer from Ohio. I very rarely break that rule. I'll break that rule every okay. once in a while for Founders, uh, for Bells. I've I've gone on record saying that if I need to buy a, a big case of something for like a non beer snobby crowd, just sort of a typical beer, I'll, I'll do I'll do a Yingling. Um, although I haven't personally bought any Yingling in a long time, but if I had to buy a bunch of something for relatively cheap, I would buy Yingling. Um, but it would have to be it would have to be Great Lakes because I I honestly make an effort and I cheat every once in a while, but honestly make an effort to only drink beer from the state of Ohio. Yep, I do Great Lakes. I do Great Lakes now. Maybe Sam Adams Oktoberfest since it's October Fest is out right Great now. Great Lakes has an Oktoberfest. Yeah. They do. Actually, theirs is pretty good, too. Yeah. Hmm. Best October. Best Oktoberfest? It's Wolf's Ridge. And they're not even paying us this episode. This us got the thing up here. Hey, Wolf's Ridge. We miss you. <laughs> we miss you, you Wolf's get, Ridge. Come back. You need to get me some, Jared. Uh, <laughs> I can't get any. I mean, I can go buy some. I always bought it, though. <laughs> Wolf's Ridge. Come on. We miss you. Come on back. All right, Duncan asks us one more. Can we restart the Know Your Enemy segment, but every week it's just an update on Kevin Warren's actions or inactions of the week? Oh, that's a good... I mean, that's basically the entire show right now. (laughs) (laughs) But Know Your Enemy, Kevin Warren edition. That's funny. That's funny. I'll give you that, Duncan. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, maybe we might do that. All right, Derek on <laughs> know Twitter. Know your enemy. The entire Big Ten. <laughs> Derek on Twitter asks, what's your favorite Ohio State game to rewatch during the Haskins slash Fields era? I haven't been able to bring myself to watch football without the Buckeyes yet this year. Seeing my trend here, Jared. Yeah. I need to scratch that football itch. I, I, I can't right now. I I just seriously can't right now. I can't do anything. Some of those Michigan games, it's just fun to watch just because it's Michigan and just beating up on Michigan never gets old. Right. But those are, those are fun games to watch. Uh, Fields, that season just went by so quick. Yeah. To, to me, it went so quick. And maybe it's... I mean, same thing with Haskins, too. It's like you only had one year. You didn't really get to really take the time to savor the moment. You're just like just in awe 
of what came of the season and just like every week he's just like the normal of like oh yeah Haskins threw 300 yards oh no big deal and it's just like what yeah <laughs> looking back at it yeah yeah I but I, I can't I, I I which one am I going back and watching I'm I'm not I can't with football right now I might be able to watch the NFL once the NFL comes back because despite the fact that it's football, it still feels separate. Um, I just can't with college football right now. I, this is me on a college football podcast talking about how I can't college football right now. To answer your question, pick one of the two or both Michigan games. Sure. Um, one more question from Derek. Do – excuse me. We have been seeing pictures posted on Twitter of some Ohio State practices – do we know to what degree the other big teams are practicing? Are the teams who voted no to playing going as hard as the Buckeyes? Uh, the Ohio State media team, and by media team, I mean like the in-house um, social media team, uh, are second to none. So uh, I, I, it seem, Harbaugh seems to indicate that they are, in fact, by the way, I'm shaking the hell out of the desk, which is shaking the hell out of the camera, and I've been doing it all episode, and I'm sorry. Um, Harbaugh seems to think that his team's ready to go in two weeks. Um, again, I think the teams I would be worried about are the the two East Coast teams uh, where outbreaks have been more difficult. Um, Michigan State doesn't have... Uh, players on campus right now i think they're 100 percent remote so i i don't know what's happening with michigan state there's a lot of talk and again i don't know how true any of it is you will find no certainty here but there's a lot of talks about the big 10 potentially starting up but with not all of the teams um i wouldn't be shocked to see and this is just me guessing maryland rutgers michigan state opting out I know other, and I know that there are other teams that are being included on that list from people who are, in fact, selling you certainty. And again, you know how I feel about people selling you certainty. Um, but the ones just from analyzing what information is publicly available um, to see, like I said, our two East Coast teams plus Michigan State who have taken their campus remote to see those teams opt out. That's that's the best answer I can give you, Derek. Nebraska also seems to be going just mm -hmm. for that right just for the record, Nebraska also seems to be going hard. Yeah, it seems like Ohio State and Nebraska is that is and that Iowa. Meme. Well, yeah, and Iowa too, but originally Nebraska and Ohio State, it's that meme where you see like Arnold Schwarzenegger and um Oh um, um his name uh it's from it's from the original predator movie is it not yeah they're I, just like they're like my man and they're both just like with just big they, arms they, they yeah. clap they they clasp their hands and then they just flex as much as they can yeah that one mm. and i saw somebody like drew in like io and they're like hey here's an <laughs> us two guys yeah all right kyle any more ask the cast I think we just What's did that? the same. We just we just asked each other the same question, which we I did. think means we're ready to end the show. Hey, get this, we're over. <laughs> um, follow us on all the things. If you need links to anything, including the Mad Canadian, uh, and our T-shirt stores, I'm, I'm wearing. This is our official logo T-shirt. One of them has to be official, right? We have like 40 some shirts. One of them has to be the official one. Well, here you go. This is the official one. Um, that's all I got. Um, yeah, we every episode has a link, what we call our master link, uh, down in the description. And it takes you to all of our other links, including t-shirt stores. Uh, we have the Sloopcast stuff. I know a lot of people don't necessarily want to wear like podcast merch. So if you're looking for just maybe some 
Yay Ohio, Yay Ohio Designs is, is how I refer to them. Uh, you can check out the 7071 store. That link is also in the master link. Uh, Kyle's Twitter page, my Twitter page, uh, our Instagram page. All of that is under the master link. Our Patreon store. Um, all of that stuff. Or if you want a fire Kevin Wilson shirt. We have a fire Kevin Wilson shirt. Absolutely. Uh, talking about beer, I have, uh, I should, it's, it's too far away to go get. Um, it's the Ohio pale ale sloop cast brewery t-shirt. It's got a big barrel on it. It's a, it's a fun design. I like that one. Go check that out. Uh, like I said, we got like 40 some designs. I They're think pretty th- cool. in both stores. So between the stores, I think we have. I think we're approaching like a hundred designs. You're gonna find something you like. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Yep. Um, that's it. That's all. That's all the talking I feel like doing. Kyle, what's in Kyle's corner? Uh, not much. I will say again, because of the time we're recording, I know that the crew. The crew is playing uh, Cincinnati Sunday evening night. So unfortunately, I'm going to be a little behind here. Hopefully they win because if that's the case, <laughs> I will say that like Columbus through the regular season, not counting the um, the tournament bubble that they had down in Orlando, they're on a roll here. Uh, before the Before the Cincinnati game, They've played nine games, Jared. Nine games, then they've won six, drew two, and lost one. Guess how many goals they've let up? It's two, right? Two. They've only let up two goals. And I believe, Jared, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe, Jared, the crew have not let up a single goal and I may curse this because um, may curse this because I think they're playing in um, I think they're playing in Columbus today. But yeah, um, they are. Okay, tonight or yesterday tonight or last night. <laughs> they didn't give up a single goal at home. So how about that? Yeah, that's that's an absolute fact. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a great, it's been a great season for the crew, even though it's been a weird season for the crew. Um, Mm -hmm. that's, that's for sure. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm still out of it. I'm still just out of it. I got nothing to to add right now. I apologize. Well, who are we listening? Who are we, who are we adding to end the episode here, Jared? Oh man, you really just had to go and put me on the spot like that, didn't you? I did, yes. Oh nope, I oh nope, that woods per season. Never mind. Continue on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were about to save me, and then I was like, oh thank goodness. Kyle's gonna save me and talk about something else for a second. Um tonight's ending music will be brought to you by Doc Robinson. Uh they're a fun Ohio duo. Uh, you can check them out. You can find all that information, all that information down in the doobly doo, along with the uh, the show notes and the master link. Um, and with all that being said, go ahead and listen to local music, drink local beer, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Doc Robinson. Hi YouTube. Can you see it in my eyes? It's not an act. This is me being very transparent with you guys. It's really not an act. I'm, I don't have answers for you. I'm as pissed off and frustrated as you guys are. And I am tired. You know what? Support your local high school football team. <laughs> it's not, I don't think you can technically call them local anymore, Kyle. You are many miles away from them many miles but you know i still support them of course you do and of course you can there's not local Mm -hmm. anymore (laughs) you're an alumni you got that going for you they're looking really good this year yeah check out columbus grove why not (laughs) division seven football 
seven now. This was six at the time, but yeah, seven. Yeah, no, that, there was no Division Seven back in two thousand three. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's let's join back up with our podcast listeners. Want to once again thank Doc Robinson for ending today's show, and I want to. Once again, thank the Mad Canadian for sponsoring today's show. Um, I don't have the Mad Hatter on the desk here, but uh, I also had a bit of a hand in helping the the Mad Hatter happen. Uh, I know that the, uh, the Mad Canadian was asking, just she's just talking to us about spices and stuff. And I go, you would be really cool. It's like a spicy salt. Like there, there's the S and P bud, it's salt and it's pepper. It's delicious. It's great. No one's suggesting otherwise. Uh, what makes the Mad Hatter different? Instead of it being black pepper, it's more of a chili pepper. It's a red pepper. So it has it's salty. Uh, it has red pepper. Not and I don't just want to say like red pepper. Like it's just red pepper. It's it's a blend of different spicy chili peppers. Um, and then there's also some citrus in there and something earthy. There's something earthy in there. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, maybe there isn't actually. I don't know. Um, point is, is that it's, it's it's like a salty chili lime salt. I said salt twice, but I didn't know how else to finish that sentence. Uh, and it's really, really good. I put it on my chicken tenders. You could put it like in your salsa. I think it would be really good in there because it's got the lime. A lot of people like lime in their salsa. It's got the chili peppers. Um, if, if you're starting with just like straight tomato uh, and you're building a salsa from scratch, you're going to need some salt in there uh, to, to sort of drive it all home. And I think it would be uh, an amazing salsa base if you're going off of like straight tomatoes. And that being said, if you're building, if you're taking like an existing salsa, maybe like a cheap Kroger brand by the gallon salsa, and you're just trying to make that one better. Uh, you don't necessarily want to add a ton of salt to that one because it's already got some salt in it, but you want to make it taste a little bit more fresh, a little bit more authentic. You want to you want to jump to this one right here. That's the Brits blend. That's your uh, Southwest blend. Um, it goes great on most things, including chicken and beef. But where it really shines is like in your chili and your salsa and your tacos, anything sort of Southwesty. That's that's your Brits blend right there. But you can find this and a bunch of other spices. Some new spices coming soon. Uh, you can find all of that uh, madcanadianbbq.com. Uh, again, you can check out that master link. It has both a link to his website and the promo code inside that master link. Um, so you can check out all of that uh, in the show notes, or you can just go to the madcanadianbbq.com and simply remember that it is Sloopcast10 at Sloopcast10 at checkout. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered.